I got these devices from a friend cleaning house of many items, including these electronics. She knew I liked tinkering and thought I could make use of them somehow. My first project will be to take this 2010 Toshiba laptop and see what I can do to it, if anything, to give it at least 3 or 4 more years of life. Stay tuned to see what I do with this decade old laptop. What I'm going to do today is tear down this 2010 Toshiba Satellite L650 into as much of its individual parts as I need to so that I can replace or repair all of the items you see listed. I'm going to see if I have spare stuff lying around that I can use, for example, the RAM that didn't work when I tried to upgrade the ThinkPad T410 gaming laptop. I'm going to see if that same RAM will work on this laptop. An item from the list that isn't so obvious is the AC port. For some reason, when the barrel connector is plugged into the laptop, nothing happens. The battery doesn't charge and the laptop doesn't get any power. To get around this, the connector has to be plugged in only part ways before it will power the laptop. That's the first item on the list that's actually a repair, although it might be fixed by a part replacement. I'll have to look that up. The second item is a part replacement, but it's the first time I've seen this. The battery is dead and has to be replaced. I've tried charging the battery, but it'll only keep the laptop running for about 30 seconds before shutting off without warning, even after 6 hours of charging. An interesting issue I found was if I leave the battery connected and run the laptop off the AC adapter, it still shuts down after 30 seconds. What I found was I need to remove the battery and run the laptop off of AC only before it'll run like normal. I hope this is a simple battery replacement and nothing more involved than that. So from this point on, until I'm done dismantling the L650, I'll be recording a 30x time lapse, changing the camera angle occasionally to give you the best view possible. The first thing I'm going to do is clean all of these large plastic parts. There's not so much grime as there is cat hair inside and out. I didn't record it here, 
but I vacuumed the keyboard to get the cat hair to stick out from under the keys, then used packing tape to pull the hair out from underneath the keys. Wiping with isopropyl alcohol helped take some of the light grime and oil off, but there wasn't much to begin with. What you can't see in this shot is how much cat hair was inside the laptop. At this point, I was about halfway done with getting the hair out, but there was still some sticking out of different nooks around the inside. So here's the CPU I want to upgrade, an Intel i3-370M. The first thing I did was look for a Toshiba technical manual. Besides having details on the different components, these manuals usually have different upgrade options that will work with the system. As you can see for the CPU, there is one upgrade option. What I think I'm going to do is research some of the different performance metrics of each CPU so I can compare them and decide whether the CPU is worth upgrading. Another thing I'm hoping for is that as of the publishing date of this manual, maybe more CPUs with better performance have become available. So it's about a week later and the CPU I got from eBay is the i5-580M. There were quite a few CPUs I could have chose from and this one seemed like a safe bet. It won't generate too much additional heat and the Passmark benchmark was about double the benchmark of my current i3 CPU. I don't know if that translates to double the actual performance, but it seemed like a good choice of all the options I had to choose from. The upgrade is pretty simple. Insert the CPU facing in the correct direction. Lock it in place with a flathead screw. Add some thermal paste and remount the heatsink and fan assembly. I had originally planned to pick up a new barrel connector AC port since discovering it wasn't soldered to the motherboard and it was pretty inexpensive. Then I decided maybe I should make an effort to at least test the connector to see if there might be a simple fix. So I got my voltmeter and took a baseline measurement from the AC adapter coming from the wall outlet. It measured about 19 volts which is correct for this adapter. I then took the barrel connector of the wall adapter, plugged it into the laptop connector and twisted it back and forth to clean the inside of the connector surface, thinking maybe there was buildup preventing the electrical connection. I then tested the motherboard end of the connection and now got 19 volts, where earlier I was getting 0 volts. Problem solved. For the AC connector, I decided to use the existing one and hopefully cleaning out the inside of it with the plug from the wall adapter was all that was needed to repair it. We'll see how that goes once I assemble everything to a point where I can test it. My search for a replacement battery was tougher than I thought it would be. Either the price seemed way too high or the sellers with the low prices had some pretty unethical dealings with customers based on what I found in many reviews. After a while, I gave up on trying to find a battery. I figured that with it being the holiday shopping season, these kinds of sales tactics might be normal and I could look for a battery in the new year. At this point, I want to test boot up of the system to make sure the new CPU and refurbished power connector are working correctly. If so, then I can complete the reassembly and the remaining replacement parts are easy to replace even after the entire laptop is reassembled. I like these laptops where the commonly upgraded parts are easily accessible via removable panels and socketed parts. So I just upgraded the RAM to 16GB which is not supposed to work on this laptop but it's worth a shot since I had the RAM sitting around unused from a previous build. It does look like Windows won't recognize the additional RAM beyond the 8GB limit spec for this computer but as mentioned at least it's easy to swap out the new RAM and put the old one back in through the easy access panels. For the storage device, I'm mounting a 512GB SSD to replace the 500GB HDD that came with the system when it was purchased. It's not much of a difference in storage space, but it'll be a huge difference in access speed. Also, something I wanted to do once I get the storage device installed is test an install of the OS named CloudReady. 
It's a Chromebook-like OS meant to be an alternative to Chrome OS. If it works, I think it will be a more suitable OS for this computer, considering it's already 10 years old. So, I attempted to install CloudReady using a USB installer created specifically for this task. The first issue I came across was a frozen mouse pointer. It didn't matter if it was a touchpad or a USB mouse, as soon as I moved the pointer, it would freeze. So I tried the install again using no mouse functions and used only the keyboard to tab to and enter on the appropriate buttons. It seemed to work, so after the CloudReady install to SSD, I attempted to boot from it. Now all I got was a blank screen that seemed to be locked. Not giving up, I now tried using a full-sized SD card adapter to install CloudReady. Same process as before, and I didn't show it here, but I got the same result of a locked blank screen. In the end, I gave in and decided to install Windows 10 for now, and maybe if I can read up on those errors I got from CloudReady, I could give it a try again. Of course, if Windows 10 works okay for what my son does with this laptop for school, it might suffice as is. That's it for this video, but there's a couple of things I wanted to update you on. I said the laptop originally had 8GB of RAM. It actually only had 4GB made up of two 2GB modules. Luckily, I was able to find a single 4GB module in an old laptop, so I used that module along with one of the 2GB modules in this computer, so I now have 6GB. It's not 8, but it's better than 4. Also, I decided to take a look at dismantling the battery just to see what it was made of, and I was surprised to find that the cells used are 18650, which is a pretty common rechargeable size. For my own knowledge, I may try to rebuild this pack at some point, but in the meantime, I did find an eBay seller that seemed reliable and had decent prices on replacement batteries, so that's going to be on order soon. I hope to eventually get some version of Chrome OS on this laptop, which should make good use of this computer's age. Leave your questions and comments in the comments section below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.